Peace. This is Wise for Wise Words Media. Back at y'all with another Top 5 Tuesday. And this week, we gonna go with a Yankees edition. Derek Jeter edition. In honor of the finale of his um, docuseries called The Captain. That's on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. You can catch it. Um, And yeah, it comes to an end this Thursday at 10 o'clock. So we gonna go with Top 5. Derek Jeter plays of his storied career. So number five, we're going to go with one simply known as The Dive. For those of us who had the opportunity to witness those Yankees-Red Sox matchups of the early 2000s and the 2000s, oh man, that Anyone can attest. That is some of the greatest baseball, some of the greatest sports moments you will ever witness in your life. That I'm so happy to have been uh, around for it, into baseball for it. It's one of those things that are mythical, man. Like, stories can't even give it the proper justice. But... You know, in their games, usually they even their regular season games feel like playoff games. So here we are in July, middle of the season, and they they're at they're having another one of their you know extra inning games. Neither side is giving up. So Boston's at bat, and you get a pop fly going foul. Is about to go foul towards third base. Derek Jeter measures it and says, you know what? I think I could get this. So from shortstop, he sprints towards the wall behind third. And as he's running, you know, it's he's running at such a high speed. And at that velocity, with that type of momentum, you can't just stop on a dime. So he goes, dives to make the catch, and as he lunges in, makes the catch, fans had to help him up. And when he comes up, not only does he come up with the ball in his glove, but he comes up bloody. Face is bleeding, bruised, and gives a wink. That's the type of sacrifice the type of leadership that Derek Jeter displayed throughout his career. And this is the reason why he's the ultimate winner. And the Yankees eventually, in a couple more, in, in, in like an inning or two later, eventually win that game. You think that play didn't have something to do with that victory? That's the leadership, you know, the leadership he displayed. He displayed the leadership that, he was going to lead by example. And that's the type of stuff that he did. Which is what made him the great leader that he was. Um, so yeah, that the dive. And this is in July, which some would call a meaningless game. And he exhibits that type of, uh, of determination to win in a game in July. Not even a postseason game in October or a late season game in September. So that's Derek Jeter for you in a nutshell. So number five is the dive. Number four. I'm going to stick with the number four. <laughs> this one's fun. Let's go to the 2000 World Series against the junior varsity team of New York. The New York Mets. Mets and Yankees are in a subway series. And the, Yan the Mets, they picked up a game, right? They picked up a game. So now the, Met the Yankees are up just two to one, you know? So it's a crucial game four now. Game four is somewhat crucial now because we either going to finish them or this thing's going to get tied up. So what does the captain do as soon as he gets up? Smacks one. And what I love, not only did he set the tone for the end 
for the burial of the New York Mets in 2000. But you had to see the face, the look on his face. He had the look of an assassin. That was the look of an assassin, a man that was on a mission. And when he smacked that homer, just if you could go back and look at it, look how he rounds the bases. Look at he's not even. It was just pure, like, I'm out for blood. And man, that's what it was. From that sec, from that moment forward, the Mets had no chance. The Yankees made easy work from them at that point forward, which made, you know, Egbayani, who actually said that the Mets would win in, in five games. Yeah, the series was over in five, but not the way you called it, my man. So, yeah, the Yankees made easy work. And like Derek Jeter said in, in his captain series, man, it, it was the Mets. The Mets, like, they're just the Mets. <laughs> just the Mets. <laughs> Love the captain, man. That's number four. The game four. Home run. Captain Clutch, you know what I mean? That's why he got that name, too. Speaking of Captain Clutch, that sex weighs us to number three. My third favorite Derek Jeter moment is one that, you know, was one that was much needed for the city of New York, and that is Mr. November. Derek Jeter and the Yankees are in the World Series yet again against the Arizona Diamondbacks and you know usually the World Series is played out throughout October never never hits November but due to 9-11 you know the uh, the World Series got pushed back a week so now the World Series was actually going to be played in November Yankees are trailing and they're making a comeback. And who steps up and hits a home run to, to lead the Yankees into victory against the Arizona Diamondbacks? Against Kim, who was a lights-out closer. None other than the captain himself, man. Captain Clutch. And before, the, before he, he gets this historic play the clock starts strikes 12 and there was a there was a like a chime in the stadium letting you know the clock struck 12 and you can see it's 12 o'clock and the captain hits the home run to put the Yankees ahead and win the series I or well win the game and those type of moments right there and it was amazing because there was a guy in the crowd with a Mr. November banner and the cameraman you know credit to him was able to locate him and boom showing the Mr. November and that is the type of clutch performance that Derek Jeter displayed you know I had a hard time deciding which would be number three between that and um, his 3,000th hit. So let's just say number 3,000 is the, the uh, what, do you, what do you call it, the uh, honorable mention. Because there's another situation right there where he's up to bat in, in a storied position and he smacks a home run to join the 3,000 hit club. Like, who does that? Who does that? And he goes five for five that day. Who does that? Only Derek Jeter. So, yeah, going back to, you know, the, the series with the Diamondbacks, that was much needed. You know, New York was in a rut, man. We was, you know, the country as a whole was feeling, feeling bad, you know, for the attack that happened on the country. And... It was a time for a lot of people, you know, as sports usually are. Sports is the greatest the great escape from reality. You know, it's an escape from reality. It's a way to clear your mind from all the stuff that's happening in your life. And 
it, it not only did it give Yankee fans hope, but it gave the city hope. It gave the city something to talk about. There was a buzz that was just very unique in the city, man. You had to be there. It was a beautiful thing, man. And the Yankees end up pulling another comeback. So it was like, this was the type of stuff, man, that you can't even make up. You can't even put it in script. So that, that to me, was number three. Number two. <laughs> number two is the play that kind of started the uh, the clutch, shall we say, of Derek Jeter in the postseason. And that is the 1996 series against the Orioles in Yankee Stadium. Derek Jeter up to bat. And the young captain, the rookie, a rookie at that, steps up to the plate. And he smacks a home run to right field. You know, some say there's some controversy there. There's something about, like, uh, you know, one of my friends, you know, a friend of mine by the name of Jeffrey Mayer was sitting on, on right, you know, in right field. And there's some kind of controversy. But clear home run. Jeffrey Mayer just was in the right place to get, you know, catch a souvenir that went over the fence. But, you know, clear home run. And that started the legend of the captain right there. As this young rookie phenom, this young sensation, steps up in the clutch to lead the Yankees in that series for a home run. And the Yankees never look back from that point forward. We end up making easy work of the Orioles and on our way to our first championship in the Dynasty era. So that clutch performance right there and, you know, that that definitely was one of those moments you'll never forget as a child. You know, I was, I was a child at that time, and it was one of those moments that you're going crazy watching it, and you'll never forget. Those are the ones that cement the fanhood, you know, the fandom that you have growing up for a team. Moments like that. And number one, oh, y'all know where that was going to be. Y'all knew where I was going with that one. All Yankee fans, all baseball fans know where we're going with number one. Another, just simply known as, type play, the flip. The Yankees are playing the Oakland Athletics, a young, talented team in the ALDS in 2001. So, as they're playing this series, they're down 2-0, right? They lose this game, they're done. So, one of my favorite all-time pitchers, Mike Messina, is pitching. And he gives up a hit that goes deep into right field, into the corner. And Shane Spencer throws a horrible pass, horrible throw. Horrible throw to home base. Such a bad throw that he overthrows two cutoff men. The IQ of Derek Jeter to have the presence of mind to see that it's a horrible throw. And to run from shortstop to run all the way in between first and home to intercept that bad throw and flip it. There's no repositioning. There's no looking, you know, getting a steady look at Jorge Posada at home base. So it's pure presence of mind, pure instinct. To run, to jump from short, from shortstop, all the way in between first and home, intercept, become the cutoff man when you as a shortstop have no business being there between first and home, 
runs, becomes a cutoff man, flips it to Jorge Posada, and they tag Jeremy Giambi at home base. That was genius. It was a pure display of IQ. It was one of the greatest plays in postseason history. It is probably the greatest defensive play ever. And it is one of those moments that cement why Derek Jeter had the name had names like the captain, El Capitan, Captain Clutch, Mr. November, so on and so forth. Because his IQ and determination to win is unmatched, second to none. And that play right there was so amazing that Jason Giambi, when he became a member of the New York Yankees a couple years later, during spring training, Jason Giambi asks Derek Jeter, can you please go through that play with me again? Like, you know, because that play got his brother, it got his brother out. So he's, he's like, and all as a fan, like, can you please go through that play again that you did in, in the in the uh, ALD, ALDS? And you know that's the type of guy that Derek Jeter was, man. Admirable amongst his peers, admirable amongst fans. And if you're a true fan of baseball, you admire what he did for the game, especially especially during the time that he played, known as the steroid era, where a lot of players were doing steroids on both sides pitchers hitters and you know he played the game clean he never cheated the game never cheated his fans never cheated his organization he was a he was the pride of the Yankees pride for his family and that's the type of guy man that you gotta love man you gotta root for that guy man before my favorite baseball player the guy that got me into baseball was David Justice as a kid I was into I was a huge David Justice fan you know um he's the one that made me because you know I used to watch the Yankees because of um because of Phil Rizzuto holy cow as a kid as like a six-year-old you love that stuff it's funny it's animated but the player that made me be like wow I want to go outside tomorrow morning and and, and hit a home run like him was De or was David Justice, but Derek Jeter was the was the guy that made me elevate my love for baseball, elevate my love for the Yankees, and I just I, I just was in awe watching this man for all for throughout his story career. So you know that's it for now. That's my top five Tuesday, Yankee edition, Derek Jeter edition. On that note, enjoy your day. I'm out. Peace.